Some cities in the U.S. are going downhill faster than Scott Baio's movie career, and like Scott Baio's career, this has been going on for decades. When cities start to lose their population, a series of related events start the snowball effect. Fewer people means fewer tax dollars. Fewer tax dollars means fewer public services like police, fire, and teachers. It also means less money for infrastructure like roads, bridges, schools, and healthcare. As those things go away, so do businesses and the jobs they supply. That, of course, leads to more people leaving and we start the cycle all over again. One of the biggest indicators that a city is poised to see a drop in population is the rise in violent crime. And as you'll see in this video, they all have depressingly high violent crime rates. Only two good things happen when a city loses population, cheaper real estate and less traffic. Today, we're looking at cities that have been losing population or have seen a significant drop in their growth and will probably start losing population over the next few years. Got it? Get it? Good, let's take a look. Number 10, Baltimore. Baltimore is a city that's been struggling with a buttload of problems for many years. The city has lost its population due to its high crime rate, extreme poverty, and aging infrastructure. Baltimore is a historic city with a history of violence. Back in 1849, some dude named Reynolds poisoned Edgar Allan Poe, possibly stealing his clothes, and he was never more. The last time this city had any form of growth was in the 1950 census when the city itself maxed out at about 1 million residents, just a little under 950,000. It's been downhill since then. Currently, they sit around 550,000 residents. Now, that's just the city. The entire metro area has a population of almost 3 million residents. In this video, we're just talking about the cities, not the metro areas. So understand there's a difference. And don't tell me I'm wrong because you don't understand what a metro area is. Moving on. Now, when it comes to their poverty, it's pretty harsh. The median household income in Baltimore is $37,000. That's brutal. Considering the national average is a little over 70,000 right now. There is around 820 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's more than double the national average of 395 for every 100,000 residents. Now, Baltimore's had a steady decline in population. In 2010, they had 622,000 residents. In 2020, they only had 602,000. It is estimated that Baltimore will see a 9% decrease in population by 2030. Number nine, Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is one of those cities that is in two different states. You got Kansas City, Missouri, and you got Kansas City, Kansas. In case you're not from the U.S. In this one, we're focused on Kansas City, Missouri. Kansas City is a city that's sort of been making a comeback in recent years. However, the city still has a high crime rate and is struggling to attract young professionals. So that's why a lot of people think they're going to start slipping when it comes to population in the coming years. Kansas City has a lot of interesting history, including in 1803, during the Louisiana Purchase, Lewis and Clark visited the confluence of Kansas and the Missouri Rivers, noting that it would be a good place to build a fort. In 1831, a group of Mormons from New York State, led by Joseph Smith, settled in what would become the city of Kansas City. Here in 2023, Kansas City has a population of about 500,000 residents, just a tad over. Now, obviously, one of the biggest problems Kansas City, Missouri has is violent crime. It's 281% above the national average. They have about 900 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. Now, this is one of the few cities on this list that's gaining population still. But like I said, I don't think that's going to last much longer. In 2010, they had 478,000 residents. In 2020, they had 498,000. So they gained about 20,000 residents. But it's predicted that in the next two or three years, they'll lose up to 2.3% of their population. That one's just a prediction based on the poverty rate, the crime rate, and the median household income, which is $50,000. Number eight, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Minneapolis is a city that's been struggling with crime and racial tensions in recent years. This city also has lost population due to its high cost of living. Yes, they got some problems and they're still expensive. That always works out well. The population in Minneapolis in 2023 was about 420,000. Just the city again, not the metro area. That's down about 100,000 from their peak in 1950 when they had about 520,000. Now, their median household income isn't too far off from the national average. It's actually $60,000. Like I said earlier, the national average is a little over $70,000. Now, here's where they suck. Their crime rate is about 1,000 violent crimes per every 100,000 residents. It's kind of high. 
Now, even though they've got a mixed bag of good and bad stuff going on there, they did gain population from 2010 to 2020. About 26,000 residents they gained. That's not going to last much longer. It's predicted that they're going to lose about 2.3% by the 2030 census. Number seven, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is like the only place in Wisconsin that has any legitimate crime. The state is very safe overall. This is normally when we get someone that had something happen to them that they claim the crime rate is horrible everywhere. Wisconsin, like, my car got broken into and I live in Wauwatosa. So the crime rate's really bad because something happened to me. Now, if you know the history of Milwaukee, you know that this is where Happy Days was supposedly based on. Oddly enough, Scott Bale was on Happy Days. One thing led to another and Fonzie decided it was a great idea to jump a shark. In 2023, Milwaukee's population is right around 560,000. That's down from its peak in 1960 of 740,000. So they're losing a lot of people. The median household income here is $40,000. That's a good stretch from 70,000, the national average. Now, like I said, they got some crime. They actually have 1,100 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's not good. Between 2010 and 2020, they lost 21,000 residents in Milwaukee. And it's estimated that they will lose another 3.5% by the 2030 census. That's the minimum, by the way. I see them losing a lot more unless things turn around. Number six, Cincinnati, Ohio. Cincinnati, Ohio is where you move to when you can't afford Columbus and Cleveland scares you. Cincinnati is a city that's been struggling economically for many years. The city has also lost population due to its high crime rate and aging infrastructure like so many other cities in this part of the country. In 2023, Cincinnati has a population of about 300,000. That's down from its peak in 1950 of 504,000. Again, this is a city that is struggling with the median household income. It's $45,000 a year for a house, not just a person. That again is well below the national average of about 70,000. Now I say about because different studies have it at 70,000, others have it at like 68, and I've seen one that has it at 64. If you're looking to get hurt, Cincinnati's a good place to do it. Their violent crime rate is 1,200 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. So I mean, if your mission this year is to maybe spring a couple extra holes you didn't have before, fractured skull, concussion, things like that, head to Cincinnati, they're waiting for you. Cincinnati is strange in another way. The census has two different numbers for their populations, kind of weird. One has them losing almost a thousand residents in that decade, and another one has them gaining about 13,000. But in 2021 and 2022, they already saw those numbers start to go down, regardless of what it was. They lost 0.1% in 2021, and they lost 0.6% in 2022. They're estimated to lose about 5% by the 2030 census. Now those are the estimates and if something good happens like a giant factory opens there or some business moves into Cincinnati that's massive, that could change everything. But that's where it stands right now. Number five, Buffalo, New York. Buffalo is a city that's been hit hard by the declining manufacturing. This is like the town that civility forgot. They got a lot of crime. They got a lot of rude people. I mean, it's New York. You're expecting a little rudeness, right? City also has a high crime rate, and they're also struggling to attract new residents of any age, just human beings in general. The good news is it's extremely cheap to live here these days. Buffalo is another city that peaked during the 1950 census with 580,000 residents. Every single decade since then, they have lost population until 2020, where they actually gained 6%. But that was kind of a fluke. I think it actually got so uncrowded and cheap that people actually start moving in there, but the crime is still so high, people don't want to live there anymore. Currently in 2023, the population of Buffalo is about 278,000. The median household income here is 35,000, and their crime rate is 1,400 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. You know, you normally don't find that much crime in cold weather places, it seems like. It always seems like it's going on someplace else. But now that I think of it, Detroit, Chicago, and Cleveland all have some serious crime. I don't know, it just always seemed like it's got to be hot to do a lot of crime. In 2010, Buffalo had about 261,000. Now, they jumped up about 6.5% to 278,000 in 2020. That was two and a half years ago, and they're still there. Now, it's estimated by the 2030 census, they'll lose around 9%. 
Number four, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. We just talked about Pittsburgh not too far back. I don't think many people are interested in Pittsburgh anymore. I could tell by the amount of views I got on that video. Nobody cared. There's just certain cities and certain states in this country that I don't care what I'm saying about it. People are going to watch and Pittsburgh ain't one of them. But Pittsburgh's been a city that's sort of been making a comeback in recent years. However, the city still has high crime rate and it's struggling to attract young professionals and new industries. Pittsburgh's population peaked at the 1950 census with 676,000 residents. Since then, they've dropped down to about 301,000. The 1950 census was the last time they had gained population. The median household income in Pittsburgh is about 50,000, so that's not the worst on this list, but it's still not great. Still 20,000 below the national average, at least. Their crime rate is 1,500 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's getting pretty high. From 2010 to 2020, Pittsburgh went from 305,000 to 302,000. Now, that's just the city again, not the metro area. The metro area has about 2.3 million. And in 2020, they had about 302,000. By the 2030 census, it's estimated that they'll probably lose around 11% of their population. Number three, St. Louis, Missouri. St. Louis is a city that's been divided by race and class for many years, and the city has lost population due to its high crime rate and declining economy. In 2023, the population was right around 300,000 with the entire metro area having about 3 million residents. I think one of St. Louis's biggest problems is it's a little expensive for its stats, I guess you could say, and their median household income is around $40,000. The real downfall for St. Louis and really this whole metro area, including East St. Louis, is crime. It's pretty rough here. I think a lot of cases they fly under the radar when you have places like Eastside Chicago and Detroit, but they get a good amount of crime. Matter of fact, their violent crime rate is 1,800 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's not good. This again is another city that peaked in the 1950s with 850 56,000 residents. That's also the last time they had a positive census. In 2010, they had 319,000 residents. In 2020, it dropped down to 301,000. And in 2021, they dropped all the way down to 293,000. That trend's not going to slow down anytime soon. Some estimates have them losing up to 13% of their remaining population by 2030. Number two, Cleveland, Ohio. When I first started this channel, I think one of the first jokes I told about a place was Cleveland. And it's what's the best thing to see in Cleveland? The skyline in your rearview mirror. Cleveland is another city that's been hit hard by the declining manufacturing in this country. City also has lost population due to its high crime and aging infrastructure. It's really bad there. They do have little pockets of the city that have seen, I don't know, progress. But for the most part, yeah, it sucks still. The population in 2023 was 380,000. That is a serious drop from their peak, which again was in 1950 with 914,000. That's just in the city. But since 1950, they have lost population every single census. So why is that? Why are so many people flooding out of this city? Well, probably has to do with how much they're getting paid and how dangerous it is. The median household income in Cleveland is $32,000. Combine that with the crime rate and you have to think, why does anyone live here? The violent crime rate in Cleveland is 2,300 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. That's ridiculous. In 2010, they had 396,000 residents and in... 2020, it had dropped all the way down to 372,000. It is estimated that Cleveland will lose another 12% of their population by 2030, unless things turn around. All right, before we get to number one, don't forget we have another channel called On This Day. There is a link for that channel down below. Please go over there and subscribe, watch some videos, leave a like, share it with your friends. All right, on to number one. And number one. Detroit. Yeah, Detroit, Rock City. It sucks. Always has. Well, I mean, I shouldn't say it always has. Somewhere around the 1950s, like so many other cities in this part of the country, that's when the suckage really took over. And when it comes to suckage, Detroit excels. Detroit is a city that's been struggling for decades. The decline of the auto industry has led to job losses and population decline. The city also has a high crime rate, which has made it difficult to attract new residents. I bet you'll never guess when Detroit's population peaked. That's right. It was the 
1950s with 1.8 million residents. It has been on the decline since then, with most decades losing double digits. In 2010, they had 713,000 residents, and in 2020, it got down to 639,000. So why is that? Why are so many people flooding out of this city? I think it has a lot to do with how much they're making. 35,000 is the median household income in Detroit, and their violent crime rate, this is what scares a lot of people. 2,700 violent crimes for every 100,000 residents. They've started to turn their downtown area around in the last five or six years. They still got too far to go to make it a reasonable place to live. It is estimated by the 2030 census, Detroit will lose another 12% of their population, which is hard to pull off with. I mean, how much <laughs> they've lost so many. How does it keep happening? All right. That's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day and be nice to each other.